All right, this is just a video for fun to prove the relationship between derivatives and integrals. Um, for me, I think that the summing rectangles, you know, the Riemann sum of rectangles um, describing the area under a curve really helped me to visualize what an integral is. But I still wasn't quite sure why the um, derivative of the integral was the function. So in other words, why are they inverse functions? I know one finds slope. That's the derivative, and one finds the area under the curve. That's the integral. But how are these two things related, area under the curve and slope? And so here's a little proof um, that I saw that really, that really helped me to understand. So I want you to imagine that we have this function f of x, and we're marking off a point on the, the x-axis where x equals x, and one where x equals x plus h. Now I want you to imagine that we had a function I'm going to call it a of x. And a of x, all you do is you plug in, you'll plug in what x value you're at, and it will tell you how much area is underneath the curve. So if I plug in a of x, I'm going to find the area in between x and 0 and under the curve. Now what if I plugged in a of x plus h? Well, then I would get all of the area that was in a of x as well, but I would also get the area that was between x and x plus h and under the curve, right? Because I'm finding all the area before x plus h. And so now what I'm interested in is I'm interested in creating an inequality. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use left endpoint and right endpoint logic here. So for the first um, rectangle, I'm going to use left endpoint. And we agree that if, that if this is my left endpoint, that will be the height of my rectangle. And let me make some room here to prove. So if I plug in x into my f of x, wouldn't I get a height of f of x? So in other words, the height of this rectangle is f of x. But what if I choose my right endpoint? Now I'm going to get a rectangle that's taller, and its height is going to be f when I plug in x plus h, right? Because my right endpoint is x plus h. If I plug that into my function, I get f of x plus h. Um, now we're going to write the inequality. So how would I figure out what the area in this space is? I know that the area here is a of x plus h, the whole area, and then a of x is the area here from x to 0. So if I take a of x plus h, this whole thing, and I subtract a of x, I'll find the area in here. So I'm going to say a of x plus h minus a of x represents the true area. So not the right endpoint or the left endpoint, the true area from the curve down to the base of the graph between x and x plus h. And here's where the inequality comes in. Is I'm going to go ahead and say, if I choose the right endpoint rectangle, I'm going to overestimate, right? You see all this stuff in here, that's all overestimation. Because the true curve ends there, but my right endpoint has an overestimate. So it, my overestimated rectangle must be bigger than my a of x plus h minus a of x. And my um, right-hand rectangle is... It has a um, width of h, right? They both have a width of h, but this one has a height of f of x plus h. So my rectangle area is h, the height, times f of x plus h. I'm sorry, h, the width, times f of x plus h, the height. And likewise, with my left endpoint uh, rectangle, I can see that I'm underestimating, right? Because the area under the under the left endpoint rectangle is there, and we can see that I'm underestimating the true curve by about that much. So I know that this f of x by h rectangle, so h is the width times f of x is the height, this rectangle must be smaller in area than the true area under the curve. And so now we have this inequality, and here comes the fun part, is we're going to divide everything by h. 
So I divide everything by h, divide by h, divide by h, divide by h, and I end up with f of x is less than or equal to a of x plus h minus a of x over h is less than or equal to f of x plus h. Now, you'll start to recognize this. This is the derivative, the definition of a derivative, right? Um, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now we just need to take the limit as h approaches 0. So for every term, we're going to take the limit as h approaches 0. For f of x, the limit as h approaches 0. For this whole term, a of x plus h minus a of x all over h. And remember, a of x is the area function less than or equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. And that's our last term. Now over here, there's no h in here in my f of x, so it'll just stay the same. f of x is less than or equal to, we know that this is going to be the derivative of function a with respect to x. So this is derivative of function a with respect to x due to the definition of a derivative. a of x plus h minus a of x over h limit as h approaches 0. And then on this side, as limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h, well if h is 0, we're just left with f of x. Now we know that f of x is equal to f of x, therefore if dA dx is larger than f of x or equal to or smaller or equal to the same thing, that's going to squeeze where dA dx can be. And it's actually going to prove that dA dx equals f of x because dA dx can't be smaller and greater than the same thing f of x. So what we've proved here is that the derivative of the area function with respect to x is equal to the actual function. Well, the area function is the integral, which means that the derivative of the integral with respect to x is equal to the function. And you can actually push this over here and prove, prove it using, so this is using derivatives, right? What if I go ahead and move my dx over here, which is not technically a right thing to do, but as you can see, we'll throw up the integral. We'll throw up the integral bars, and what we'll end up with is proving that area equals the integral of f of x dx. And this is our integral form. And so this is just a way to prove to yourself that uh, derivatives and integrals are inverse operators. They do the exact opposite thing. Uh, one finds slope, one finds area. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next video.